so lovely to see you. I'm a little bit calmer than last time I saw you. Come on, Ed, this is here. This is long, Tommy. It's got to stop to Thomas. I've been a bit of a fan for quite a long time. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. I was just so excited and I just wanted to give you like a massive hug. Well, I like cuddles. I do. I do like that. It's just that thing where you've got a little feeling inside where you're like, am I doing something wrong? A naughty schoolboy kind of feeling. Not very often we get that kind of reaction. Usually we get, oh, it's only Tommy. It's only Tommy. <laughs> I was going to ask you that, actually. I was going to say, is that the sort of normal reaction you get from women nowadays? No, but I'll tell you a story that happened right back at the height of it all. I remember we were uh, probably second single in doing our first UK tour. And uh, my now wife, then girlfriend, I was after the show, I was back at my room and I'm on the phone. And we used to use pseudonyms, so no one knew which hotel room we were in. It was very much the kind of, um, uh, you know, we were getting chased down the streets. It was a smash hit. It was a, a lot of thing with young fans and stuff. But anyway, I'm on the phone to my wife and the door goes, oh, hold on. And I look through the little peephole in my hotel room and there's two stunning women there. And I'm on the phone to my, to my now wife and I kind of go, um... Hold on a second, I'm just going to open the door. I've got I've got some, you know, fans at the door. And she went, okay. And she said, I held and I opened the door. And the reaction I got was, oh, we thought this was Marty's room. All I had to do was just close, close the door again and say, that's it, darling. Yeah, I'll be home soon. Yeah. I feel it in my finger. lockdown the release has been huge um pinching yourself on stage as you're going through it you know looking back out and seeing that vista seeing all those people the swaying the singing along uh, it just brings a huge smile to your face it just brings this joy back into your life the life hasn't really had that much joy over the last little while wet 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 luckily have been uh, using their time to record new material there's no instant contact. Stage is the only place you get that. And to have your best friends standing next to you, playing those songs and seeing the reaction again, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's a wonderful thing. I, I told somebody this morning that I was interviewing you and they were like, oh, but the drummer's the most important person in the band. But do Definitely. you ever, <laughs> and you could say that, do you ever though wish you were kind of more front of stage, maybe the lead singer, or you're quite happy to be, you know, drumming away at the back? Okay. No, the way I've always looked at it is that the instrument chooses you. Right. So when I was 11 years of age, um, very, very young, I looked at bands on top of the pops or the local, you know, we'd go on holiday and there'd be a band playing or something. It was always the drummer that I watched. So I gravitated towards that position because, A, I've got natural rhythm, <laughs> but, you know, B, it looked quite easy. But the real thing is, is my personality didn't want to be the focus. I like to be part of the gang, not the front person, not the leader, not the... You know, look at me, look at me. I get enough attention being the drummer. It's wonderful. It's a great, you know, in other words, 90% of my life is incognito, wandering around, having a normal life. And then 10% is this absolute joy of being successful and being known and, you know, being known as an 80s pop star or whatever. That That's just a, a lovely little side thing. I read that you run, that you used to own a taxi company, that you yeah. own a pub. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, You've got quite a few little things going. Obviously, you've got two kids as well. Right back at the start, wishing I was lucky, got released. We started having success, and I always thought, this might last five minutes. This might last ten minutes. We expected to be an indie band, maybe number 99 in the charts, and have a career that way. Didn't expect to be top ten and number ones and so successful. So in the back of my mind, I've always, they call it imposter syndrome, where you walk into a room and you think, I don't really belong here. I've, I'm always constantly surprised by the experiences that we have, the level of success. I'm just so happy that, I've, that, we're a, that it's a band and we can share the experience. It's not a solo artist. Uh, so yeah, I was, you were asking there about why I have normal life. I think it's really important. My kids used to say, Dad, um, you do these big disco -y things. I'm like, oh, you mean a concert? No, this is when they were really young. Um, it, ma it makes you so special. Everyone knows you. And I used to say, no, no, there's nothing special at being a musician and being a pop star. We produce the music that is people's backdrop. 
But doctors and nurses yeah. and lawyers, those are the people that are important, people who will save lives and change things. Music is just the backdrop, you know, just the kind of the wallpaper of, of life as it trundles along. So uh, I don't see... I think normal life is more important. I think the full 10 years, so I'm wishing I was lucky to love us all around. Uh, Versace and loads, wads of money was this kind of thing, you know, within the UK anyway. And it was all about limos and Learjets and padded shoulders, and, you know, and looking a bit Dallas and glamorous, if you could. And that will turn your head. We always said we would be victims of, of the success. But there definitely was a time where there was a photograph I was looking at the other day and I was standing next to a private jet at an airport holding a bottle of champagne, dressed head to toe in Versace. And my reaction to that photograph was, what a bloody idiot. Who's he? The best thing that happened to us was when we took a hiatus back in 97, 98, after the massive success of Love Is All Around, um, we kind of imploded to an extent. Exhaustion, you know, um, and the constant pressure of being that kind of successful. And then you realise the beauty and the gift that it was, you know, you stopped taking it for granted. So now that we're back out and the wheels are turning again, we do appreciate every moment. It really does bring, you know, our eyes spring open and we kind of go, wow. How lucky are we that we can get to do this? Yeah. All down to the fact that the people supported us through the years and we had lots and lots of top ten hits. When I hear Love Is All Around, you know, it's a very, very special song to me. But you told me you told me last week that you weren't going to play it. You also said you were just going to play one massive long new song, but it was wonderful that it was like hit after hit after hit after hit. That's the way it should be. We are there. Um, not just be self-indulgent on stage. We're there to entertain. That's what we are. Hey, we're entertainers. Da, da. <laughs> there is certain times where you go, oh, it's that song again. Um, and you go, all right, we'll get through it. But always during, you have that thought and that feeling that as soon as you start the song, and again, you see the reaction, a smile comes to your face. It may not always be the song that's bringing a smile. It might be the antics of another band member on stage. <laughs> it might be a simple comment. Um, I think I mentioned, I don't know if it was the last interview, but I was, I've got these in-ear monitors and we're doing uh, wishing, uh, wishing I Was Lucky and I'm listening to, to Kevin singing, you know, and I've got them really quite loud in my ears as I'm playing along and I realised that the line, he had changed the line to there yeah, may be a job, saying, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there may be a job in the chippy and I'm just like, oh, and you, just, you just burst out laughing, you know, you're like, that's hilarious. So there's always a lot of moments like that that entertain us as well. You present a radio show as well, don't you? Um, like an 80s greatest hits. Is it? Is it greatest hits radio? It is. Thing, mate. Um, up here, we grew up with a radio station called Radio Clyde's um, from school days. It would be on in the morning. And so very kindly, about a year ago, they, I got, got a phone call saying, come in. Now, here's something I have learned is I thought DJ's jobs was the easiest job in the world. You know, you just... For, for 30 oh. seconds between, yeah, you just go blah, 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 and then you put it on. No, they wanted me to learn all the buttons and all that. No, no, but you need to fade that out, and then that comes in, and you press that. And remember, the adverts happen every 50, you're like, what? Eh? But when you're doing this radio show, do you not have a producer that says to you, um, Tommy, okay, only one wet, wet, wet song each night or whatever, you know, can you just play as much as you want? Or? Um, oh, good question. I started off the first few times demanding that, no, no, I really want this, you know, like, my Sharona or something like that. There was something that had drums and had a little bit of oomph to it. I really want that to be the opener. I want this. See, after about the fourth time, I was a bit like, yeah, just give me the list. It's fine. We'll just get through it. <laughs> and I just look at the list and just and I just think up stories. I kind of go, oh, right. Oh, that's Phil Collins. Phil Collins played drums with me at one point. So there was two drummers playing Wish I Was Lucky. So I tell that story. That's all I do is tell stories. I, I want to listen to this radio station. How, how can I listen to it here in Nottingham? Um... So, Greatest Hits Network. Now, I'll be honest, it's not a regular thing. What they do is, I'm, I'm the fill-in guy, so I am. So, it might be a bit intermittent, but it's Greatest Hits Network, which, and then you go on to Clyde 2, but it's broadcast across all of the, I think we've got like 25 stations, so it gets out on them all. Yeah, they give me my little turn here and, now, here and then. <laughs> when you come to Nottingham now, we had this on film, so I don't know if you can remember. Can you remember what I'm going to, can you guess what I'm going to say? When you no, come I think things, I think it's a shout out, is what yeah, you did in your stage. That was it. Yeah. That was it, Tommy. So um, you got to promise me it'll happen because you know you're going to heartbreak a 49 year old woman if you don't do this. You know, I'll be very honest with you. We we get requests almost oh. daily. Yes, 
um, um, just our, our, even close friends, people who should know better. And you go, listen, we've never done a shout out in our life. We've never once from the stage said, can we stop the whole show? Turn the lights on. Happy birthday. You know, we've never, <laughs> ever done any of that stuff. Or anything. We just kind of get on with the show. Um, but we'll have to make an exception for you. We'll yeah, have to. I guess we well, really have to. It's, I just remind me, I'm sure you'll be hanging out with the show. So you're, uh, I say, oh, you just go here. There's the bit of paper. Do this. And like, Are you going right, to do okay. it? Are you seriously going to do it? Well, uh, under threat, I think we have to. <laughs> oh, Tommy, you know, I'll just be, I'll be beside myself. Why don't you come up on stage and just sing a couple of songs as well? No, I can assure you. I can assure you. I can canoe and I can do lots of things. I cannot. I cannot sing to save my life. I can. No, no, no. That's that's way beyond. No, no, no. A little well, way. Welcome to mind. yeah. Welcome to my world. I'm not a great singer either. Um, you sing on some of the songs, though, don't you? We I sing BVs and all that stuff. You know, kind of oohs and ahs and those kind of you know backup things. But the truth is, <laughs> when you're in a room with a Marty Pello or a Kevin Sim and you hear what a true singer can do, that's where you kind of go, you know, I'm great for karaoke in a bar and kind of go and give us that, you know, Tom Jones, you know, Delilah, get Delilah on, I'm your man. Do all that and, and, and be very entertaining doing it. But the real singing, the real quality, you know, the the that God-given talent, nowhere near it, I can't do it. But to go out and do festivals, something quite new to us, um, is, is a wonderful experience because you walk in and there's ABC and huge fans of ABC. You know, Lex Kind of Love was one of our go-to albums. And then the other night, there's OMD and you're like, here's the OMD guys. Oh, yeah. But I think I've got a bit of Tourette's. Instead of saying, oh, hello, I'm a fan, I usually make a joke. I'm up to <laughs> OMD and I said, I think they'll still be booing us when we go on because, of, sort of, yeah, they'll still be booing you when we go on. And everyone stops and kind of looks at you and then they go, oh, it's a joke. I'm like, sorry, I can't stop myself from making these <laughs> comments. I always do it. Um, it's probably, it's probably uh, better my, than having the, the reaction that I do, which is just like, ah! That's true. And then Martin Fry was walking by the other day. There's Martin Fry of ABC walking past, dressed immaculately. He's got this <laughs> lamy, sparkling, beautifully pressed suit, and his hair's done beautifully, and he's walking past. And I just looked up and went, are you not getting dressed for the show then? You know. So this weekend coming up, you're going to play Rewind South. I'm really excited because I'm doing the interviews on Saturday backstage, but Sunday I'm in the crowd. It's my birthday. I was thinking to do 80s fancy dress. What do you think? Yes, um, I saw some remarkable ones at one of the previous shows. You know, I did see Mr. Blobby and a few Dolly Partons. I don't think that's quite the thing, the look you're going for. Could you <laughs> hint what you're maybe considering? Well, I was kind of thinking more just kind of, like the neon, 80s neon. Ghetto Blaster. Is it a blow up one? Yeah. All right, okay. Yeah, All right. Just to make my set look a little bit more interesting. Do you like well, that? Uh, yeah, it's very nice. It's very nice. I think um, you should dress up kind of Cindy Lauper. You should have that Ghetto Blaster under your arm as you do it. <laughs> I can see that. You think that would That's be good? good? Well, I'll do That's something. A good I'll definitely be something. And I'll be on the front and I'll be screaming and singing along. And um... oh, Amazing. For anybody that hasn't yet bought a ticket for Rewind this weekend, three reasons why they should. Oh, three reasons. Right, so it's a new a new experience for Wet 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 this year, uh, having never done this festival circuit before. But Rewind is full of mad people, which is <laughs> our kind of people. They are party people. They are loud. They are irreverent. They just go there for one reason, one reason only, to have fun and sing along. So it's hit after hit. I think there's something like 19 or 20 bands and there isn't one song that I've, when I've been there, that hasn't been a top 40 hit. It's it's like top of the pops on, you know, wrapped up to the to the, the top degree. That's what it's like. It is brilliant, isn't it? We're going to have a fantastic yeah. time. You are a superstar. I love chatting to you, Tommy. Thanks a million. And I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Oh, thank you very much, Helen. Happy birthday when it comes. I'll see you there. <laughs>